Okay, so the first step to make a track is you go into Google Maps and you want to search up that track and find which one. So in this case, I'm just going to do this as an example. So I'm going to search up Point Peely Karting. I'll make it full screen, put it into satellite view, zoom in on the track, make sure it's at either 50 meters. Actually, this won't matter too much because I'll show you how to do the scaling after. So what you're going to do is from here, you're going to use a snipping tool. And it doesn't matter, you can just do a full screenshot as well. I just use the snipping tool because you can never find my screenshots. And just label it point peely, so PP carding. Pretty good name actually, not gonna lie. Uh, so now that you have that saved, do you have your track? So over here you're gonna have this. So now you're gonna open up your 3DS Max. This one's definitely licensed by the way, definitely did not find a cracked version. So yeah. If you have plugins on your 3DS Max already, you'll probably get warnings, but for people that are brand new to this, you won't get warnings except for, or nothing is going to pop up except for this one window right here. So as soon as that's gone, what you're going to do is you're going to select this tab right, this um, tab right here, put it into full screen, and then press U on your keyboard, that, you, that way all of these grids show up over here. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Customize, go to Unit Setup, and make sure you have one of these two selected. And then you can select the um, what you want. I'd recommend using uh, meters or feet because they're not too big and not too small. But if it's on custom, when you go to load it in, uh, load the track into the game, it's not going to be the right size. It might only be one meter by one meter, which is very very small. Okay, so once you have one of these two selected and you like what you have, meters, centimeters, you can press OK. Next, you're going to select the plane and you're just going to drag it like that and then you're going to type in 1080 by 1920 or whatever the dimensions are uh, whatever the dimensions were of the screenshot but in this case since I did a full screen or a full screenshot it's going to be 1080 by 1920 uh, next you're going to put these two values to zero here that way it's centered this is obviously important because once you load this load the track in this other program you need to be centered to make it easier on yourself so now you're going to go grab your screenshot, drag it into here. Next we're going to do some scaling. So you're going to click on line from one end here to the other. You're going to do that and then right click out of it. That way you don't have a line flying around over here. So if you just hit right click once, it'll get you out. And then if you spam right click again, it'll get you out of the line thing so you won't be clicking on lines anymore. Next, uh, make sure you have this selected. You'll know because you can move it around and stuff. Uh, next you're going to go to measure and you see the length here how it is 111.767 you're going to need a calculator for this so you're going to go to just search up calculator or if you have the app you can use that as well uh, so even if this is feet it's the same thing whatever the value is here you're going to type into your calculator so in this case it would be 111.767 and then you're going to divide that by 50 because it's 50 meters over here. Like this, the thing that we used was 50 meters. And then you're going to press equals, and then you're going to get 2.23534. And then you're, what you're going to do is you're going to copy this. You're going to delete what's in there, and then you're going to do 100, and then divide it by that number. In this case, if you, um, uh, if you couldn't get it, this is why I like using this more, because then it shows you the old um, answer. So then you just do 0.3534 and then you're going to press equals and then you're going to get this. Uh, once you get this, what I'd recommend doing is copying this. So do control C and then that's basically how you scale your track. So now you go back to 3ds Max and then you're going to select the uniform scale and you're going to highlight this number right here and then you're going to do control V which will grab the number from the calculator and there you go. Now it's exactly 50 meters, just like this. And now what you're going to do is you're going to select the plane, and then you're also going to do that. That way it's exactly, that way it's scaled to the right size. Uh, now that you did this, just make sure both these values are still zero. And then this line over here, you can delete it. Uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to make your track center line. So just start off by doing this. 
Uh, for 90 degree corners, you only need two nodes, but for almost full 180 corners, I'd recommend using three. And then for str make sure that on straightaways they're straight, otherwise you're going to have a round straightaway. And then obviously over here since it's three, and then here three again, and here three. Since it's a small little straight there, I'm also going to put one there, one here, here, in here and then we're going to close it. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your modifier tab and you're going to double click on one of the dots, doesn't matter which one, and you're going to turn it into a bezier. This is what makes it round. And then you just kind of play around with it. Make sure you have this selected over here because sometimes what happens is this is selected here but you can't actually see it. So you would know if it's not selected because it's not going to have this yellow box and then you can still move it around, you still might be able to move it around or it might not let you but when you do that it ends up looking something like this when you go to move it. The track starts curving upward and stuff so we don't want to have that. So if that, ha if that does happen and you didn't go too far ahead just uh, you can do control Z and then you can just and then you can fix it after. Uh, for straightaways it will auto snap it to a straight line which kind of helps in a way so Thank you through DS Max for that. And then now, most of the time you only need to select the um, one that's after the corner, not the one before. But sometimes if if it's like slightly, let's say it's slightly round or curved up here, then obviously you'd have to select it. Uh, and then obviously for hairpins, yeah, you have to select all of them. Don't worry about this one too much. I mean, yes, try and get it as close as possible to the center, but even if it's slightly off it won't affect you too much and then yep finish it for all the corners here and here also when you're making your first track don't expect it to be like top notch believe me I'm on my fourth track right now and it's still not looking too good but. Yeah. And then make sure it's straight. This one's not that straight, but doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have our track center line over here. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna select this spline right here. You're gonna scroll down to outline, and you're just gonna drag it out right until it's at the edge of the track. So in this case, it would be right here, and then you do the same thing to the other side. Now, for this, I'd recommend for um, making tracks, I'd recommend you have like one of those like extra large keyboards that have like the extra functions like delete and and all those other things, because you're gonna need to use delete a lot. So what you're gonna do now is to get rid of this line in the center, you're just gonna press delete. Uh, now you're gonna notice that some of the things aren't right here. Like over here, it's not really lined up. So what you can do is you can just drag these around a bit. Don't drag it around too much, but you can do it a bit and kind of fix it, make it look a bit nicer in certain areas. So yeah, and if if, if it's just something you want to quickly make, put into the game, then you don't need to spend too much time on that. This is just the shape of the track. Uh, so now what you're gonna do is before we go to the next step we have all these configurations over here so now we want to make them so you're going to click on this ref line right here and you're going to put it to one end of where it is, where the configuration is so wherever it would start you put it there and whatever you do to one side you have to do to the other so make sure you put a line almost directly across from where this line is in this case I don't need to put one over here because there's already one over here and you can use it so then you put one here put it directly across and one here and directly across and of course over here. Okay, so in this case now we have an issue where a line is in the middle of both of them. So there's two ways to fix this. One, you can just move this line over here like this and then kind of stretch it out a bit because you can move the, you can stretch this out but don't stretch it out too much. Or yeah, we can put it over here as well. Doesn't really matter too much. So we have one end here and one end here. In this case, since there's already you didn't have to create this one and it was already there. You don't need to worry about that. But since we clicked over here and placed one, we have to put it here. 
and then put, do the same thing on this side. So now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to press on create line. And since it's just a pretty simple one, we can just basically put it directly across. Uh, okay, so I missed this up. Uh, so now you got you want to turn on um, uh, tog uh, snap toggle. That way it locks onto this. Because if you don't, it, you can place this line anywhere you want, which is not what we want. We want to place it right on this dot. So you're going to press S on your keyboard, and then it's going to start snapping it to these lines. So what you're going to do is you're going to drag across here. And then you're gonna click on both lines, and then you're gonna, sh and then right click out of it, and then you should have a perfectly straight line here. And then you do the same thing to the other side right here. So there we go. Uh, next thing you're gonna do is, since it's slightly round here, you could. There's two ways of doing this, but I'm just gonna do it this way. We are going to put a line in the middle there, and obviously whatever you do to one side, we have to do to the other. And then you're gonna right click on this, turn it into a bezier, and there you go. Now you have your configuration, and since this is slightly rounded as well, we bring these in a bit, and then turn this one also into a bezier. And there we go. So we have this configuration done. It's not the most accurate, but when you guys go do this, it'll be fairly simple. And then same thing over here. So you're going to do create line. Make sure you have your grid snap on. Oh yeah, and when you're um uh, when you go to do the bezier stuff, make sure your grid snap is off, otherwise it's gonna like make the corner all messed up and stuff. And then obviously when you're done again, right click out of it and then deselect create a line, press on ref line, and place it on both. And now you're gonna turn this into a bezier again, since it's slightly rounded. And then you kinda just move this around a bit until you get to the right spot. It's not going to be 100% accurate. And then Bezier again. And it's pretty good. Uh, so now what you're going to do is you're going to press on cross section. And then you're going to click like this. Now, if it looks something like this here, let me show you an example. Let's delete one of these lines here. If it looks something like this when you go do the cross section, where the lines are like connecting with each other and it's all looking like this that means you missed a place so what you would do is you just control Z out of the thing and then you just you try and find the place where there's no dot so in this case it would be over here and then you just place that dot back basically so you go to ref line and then place the dot but in my case just to control Z and then you're gonna press cross section do your cross section here now you'll notice that the cross section didn't go into here and that's perfectly normal what you're going to do is you're going to press on create a line, make sure your snap is on, and then just create manually create the cross section. The reason you need a cross section is that when you go to create the surface, if there's no cross section, parts of the track are just not going to be there. Like the track's just going to have a dead end in certain areas. So make sure you have the full cross section along the entire track. Okay, so next thing you're going to do is you're going to rename line 001 to TRKASPH. If you don't name it that, when you go to spawn in, you're just going to fall through the pavement because it's not going to be a collidable object. Next, you're going to go down here, go to surface. Uh, make sure this is checkmarked. But if it's not checkmarked and in in it's light like this, then you don't need to checkmark it. But if it's dark like this, then either checkmark or uncheckmark um, flip normals. So you're going to checkmark it. And basically, what you're going to do is no most of the time I would go 15 to 25 steps. I'm just going to quickly show you what it does. So the steps are what makes the corner round. If you run zero steps, it'll basically just look like this. But especially when you do elevation, you want to have higher steps. That way the elevation is smoother. But you don't want to have more than 25 steps because then it, your 3DS Max is going to run very slow. And also in game, the track's going to be very, very laggy when you go to load in. So now you're going to select Edit Poly. You're going to have all of these options here. Make sure you have all of these and it's at a poly. And then you're going to click on UVW map. And then... So let's just keep it like this for now, okay? So we're going to escape out of it. So now that you have this done, we need to go find a pavement texture. So what I recommend doing is you just search up pavement texture. And then you're going to get stuff like this. Uh, when you go to find a texture, okay, that was a bad one. Let's just do ash. Ash. 
Uh, oh, I forget how to spell things half the time. Sh texture. Oh, okay. So find something that you like. So something like this would be good. Actually, no, it's low quality. We aren't going to use that. Find something that also looks like your track. So let's say we like this one. We're going to do save image as, and we're just going to name it something like ASPH1 for Asphalt 1, and then you're going to save it. Uh, now that it's done saving, make sure it's either JPEG or GIF or whatever it is. Just make sure it's not a link. Now you're going to minimize your 3ds Max, and you're going to have your picture right here. Uh, personally, I use Photoshop, but you can also use GIMP, which is free. You can go download it. Actually, well, I'll use GIMP since it's free. And you're going to go to File, Open, make sure you select your desktop because that's where you should have saved it. And you're going to press Open. Now you have your texture over here. Now you want to make this a, you want to make this a perfect square. So uh, in this case, you, you can see the numbers up here. This is the size, so in this case it's 849 by 849. Or if you just want to manually do it quickly, if it's slightly off, you can just type it in here. But make sure you have the thing most of, like selected, and then you're going to click on Move Tool right here, which is then going to delete that over there, and then you have your perfect square. Uh, and I can emphasize this again: please make sure that it is the scale is 512 by 512. Otherwise, the texture will not be will not load into the game itself. In 3ds Max, it'll look fine, but when you go to convert it, it's going to give you a warning saying that the texture cannot be used because it's not to the power of two. So once you're done this, you're going to go to File and Export As. It's going to be Asphalt 1, and then you have to make this a TGA. So make sure it's .TGA, and then export it. It's going to might give you a warning. Just press Accept or whatever or Export, and then you can close this. Don't need to save the changes if you don't want to. And now you open up your 3ds Max. You're going to take it out of full screen, or it doesn't matter actually. Just click on the folder down here and go find your asphalt and then drag it right under here now sometimes it might go like this so if it does this just click on 3ds max and do control z until it goes back to normal so now what you're going to do is go to edit poly just select something that way you can see all of that and then go to your desktop click on asphalt one and drag it on here now this may look very big and that's okay you're going to click on uvw map and you're going to put the length and width to either 1 or 2 depending on what it looks like. So in this case, this is a very poor texture. I shouldn't have used it as an example. But in this case, what we'll do is we'll put it to like 1, 1 by 1. And then it'll be something like this. I recommend trying to find a good texture. Now in this case, the track is disappearing into the map. So what we can do here is we can actually just move the entire map down. So over here put negative 0.1 and there you go now the track is slightly above the map and that's how you create your track outline